Hello everyone and welcome back to Carried Away Travels. If you are a Harry Potter fan, you are in the right place because in this week's video, I'm going to tell you all about this fantastic free annual festival in Virginia that's absolutely perfect for muggles like you and me. Now, if you can already tell from the wide array of Harry Potter items on my shelf behind me, I absolutely love the Harry Potter universe. But it's always a frustration to me that there are so few experiences available outside of Universal Studios and things specifically sponsored by Universal Studios. So when I found out about this free festival last year, I knew that we had to go. I was so excited and we ended up loving it so much that we came back this year for a second time. This just happened last weekend, September 27th through 29th. It happens at the end of September every single year and we're already planning to go back for a third year because it's just so well done. So in this week's video, I want to tell you all about the Queen City Mischief and Magic Festival in Stanton, Virginia. I'll share some experiences we've had in both years and just generally let you know what you can expect from this magical festival. By the way, if this is your first time here, I'm Carrie and I share helpful travel tips, itineraries, gear recommendations, and more so you can always have the perfect trip. If that sounds like the kind of content you'd like to see more of in your feed, make sure you hit that subscribe button to get videos from me in the future. Now, if you're ready for some magic, let's dive in. Now, as I mentioned, this was our second year attending this festival, but they've been doing it for about a decade. And quite frankly, I feel like they've kind of perfected the formula for a magical experience. This happens every year in Stanton, Virginia, which is about 45 minutes from Charlottesville and two and a half hours from DC. So it's pretty accessible no matter where you live in Virginia and even from some of the surrounding states. I think what's really so special about this event is that the whole town gets involved. They transform the entire downtown area and so many of the local shops and restaurants contribute to this with special experiences and menus. They add decorations and especially with the old architecture that the downtown area has, it really feels like you've kind of been transported out of the modern world and into something a little closer to Diagon Alley. And then to add to what they already do for decorations, a bunch of the people that attend come in costume. So everywhere you look, there are people dressed up as wizards or their favorite character from the movie. I even saw a lady dressed as Hedwig this year, a little kid dressed like a golden snitch. Like that just adds so much to the environment and everyone's excited to be here. So there's just so much wonderful energy and it is just such a fun event to attend. Now, I will say we did get rather different experiences between last year and this year because of the weather. Last year, it was really cold and rainy and it was very like dreary Hogsmeade weather, but we were able to embrace that because we kind of felt like it added to the experience. But this year, there was just gorgeous sunshine, it was warm, and so the crowds were much Higher. Now, last year they did have to cancel a few of the outside events because of that rain. This year they had more events, but there was just also a lot more people, and so it was busier. And that wasn't a bad thing, but that is to say your experience could be very different from year to year just depending on weather, what's available, and how many other people are attending with you. So let's go ahead and dive into what you can actually do and experience here at the Mischief and Magic Festival. So they divided the downtown area into six different sections, and the main portion of the festival is going to be in the four blocks that are designated by the Hogwarts houses. So Slytherin, Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff. They also have an area called the Burrow, which is pretty much everything that's kind of like right along the outside of the festival. And then they have the Wharf, which is a big parking lot. And that has like the Quidditch tournament, the train station, some of the animal shows, and then a bunch of booths, as well as a few additional shows. They do put out an official map each year. So you can see exactly which 
shops, vendors, and restaurants are participating in the event, as well as a few additional experiences that are maybe hidden within a storefront or something like that. Now, one of my favorite things to do at the festival, which is one of those sort of hidden experiences, are the character meet and greets. Now they have three locations throughout the downtown area and they have a schedule posted of when specific characters will be at those locations. But if you don't know that they're there, you may walk right by. Last year, we kind of stumbled upon one of these by accident. And this year we saw that they had three. We were only able to do two just because the crowds were so big. Whereas last year we were kind of able just to walk right in. So definitely check the schedule and the map to make sure you can see where those meet and greets are. Now the meet and greets that we did this year were in the Gringotts Bank and then like a house common room photo op area. The Gringotts Bank we did last year and it's actually inside this really beautiful bank. Both years they've had the Malfoy family in there. This year they added Dobby as well and behind the little teller booths they actually had people dressed as goblins this year. Last year they just had like stuffed dummies with masks on so I thought that was a nice touch. You could actually interact with them and if you signed in they'd give you like a little uh, coin that you could take home. In one corner of this bank, they also have Professor Umbridge's office. She's in there with all of her pink stuff and her hat dishes and teacups and all of that. The lady that plays her does an absolutely fantastic job. And then this year, they added a downstairs area so you can go down into their vaults and they have kind of like a dungeon-like atmosphere down there. Mr. Filch was wandering around with his Mrs. Norris. He was another one of my favorite characters from last year. He had the Filch run down perfectly. Uh, but this was just a cool kind of creepy little area. And then you turned a corner and they have a dragon head with a vault full of gold right next to it. And I thought that was just such a nice touch. They even add like the growls and everything to make it feel a little more realistic. So I really liked that addition to the vault this year. And then there was the house common room area. We saw this last year, but by the time we got to it, it was closed. And I'm so glad we took the time to go into this one. They have a bunch of different little photo booths set up where they've completely recreated the common rooms with backdrops, furniture, decorations. And so you can go into your common room and take little photos. They also had like this big cardboard cutout with the classic wizard wanted poster so you could stick your head in there and take a little picture or video. They also had Dumbledore's office and of course Professor Dumbledore was there to take pictures. He did such a great job and then at the front of this room they had also recreated McGonagall's office and the potions classroom and so they had Professor McGonagall and Professor Snape in their designated areas to take photos as well. I just thought this was so much fun just to be able to take those kind of immersive photos but also to get more character meet and greets in. That was just a lot of fun. And then during the whole event they have characters that are just roaming the streets. They have kids and adults and the kids will have like a little pin just so you know like they're actually part of the event but they have all of the main characters walking around. You'll spot Harry, Hermione, Ron, Neville, Draco, Rita Skeeter, Sirius Black, Professor Sprout, like so many characters just wandering around and they are there to interact with you and take photos. So they may occasionally get a little bit of a line, but those tend to be kind of quicker photo op experiences than these more immersive ones. Now, what really makes this festival awesome is just the number of experiences and shows that you can attend. The festival is free and a lot of what they offer is completely free to go to. Some of the local shops will do additional experiences with a small fee, but they're usually pretty affordable between five and $15. And you typically get to come away with like something you've made to or some sort of prize, which I really like. Like you get not just the experience, but a souvenir as well. Last year, we did their Tri-Wizard Maze, which they had set up inside an old theater. 
prior to that it was supposed to be outside so this year we noticed it was inside the theater again i think maybe because they were expecting some rain we didn't do it this year but that was kind of a quirky experience last year we got to run through the maze try to find the goblet of fire they had a couple other little like side games you could do like I think it was counting the number of dragons or bugs that you'd spotted in the maze and answering a riddle. Um, so that was really cool. Last year, I also did a Build-A-Bear style, build your own Hogwarts companion experience. So I was able to create a little bowl for myself and dress it up with a little Ravenclaw scarf. And that was really fun too. This year, I wanted to try a couple different things. And so specifically, I tried the VIP wizard experience from Essentially Zen. Now, Essentially Zen has a potion rollers class for about $15, I believe. And this is like a build your own perfume experience. But they also have a VIP package, which is $65. And it comes with some additional perks and souvenirs so i decided just to spring for that and i had so much fun so with that package i got front of the line access to the different experiences and i got a special bottle for my potions roller which i was able to build from start to finish I got to pick out my bottle. They had a bunch of little charms that you could clip onto the cap. I got to pick that out. And then they had all sorts of beautiful like gemstones and rocks along with a list of like what each one kind of represented or was supposed to like manifest for you. So I got to pick out the little rocks to put inside my roller and then I got to pick the scent that I wanted. I really appreciated how much they leaned into the series with this as well because the different scents had names like Unicorn's Blood or Dragon's Blood, Siren's Tears, Eye of Newt, things like that. And so I got to choose the one I wanted. I liked Unicorn's Blood and then they filled it up with like a luck potion and then topped it off with a rollerball. And now I have this really cute little perfume bottle that I actually love the smell of. And I got to build it myself, which was so much fun. In addition to that, I got a winged key necklace and that was kind of like the ticket to let the workers know that I got like front of the line access. I also got to take two dives into the Preflex bath, which was a ball pit and they had two golden eggs at the bottom. If you found a golden egg, you got a prize. I did not, but because I had the VIP package, I got to get one of their extra special bath bombs anyways, which is this adorable little cauldron that they'd made. Like the guy behind the counter was telling me how he'd helped his wife put these all together the night before. They were so cute and I absolutely loved that. Just how adorable it is. I'm excited to use it. It was fun to dive around the bath. Uh, the prefix bath and then I also got a custom tote bag and some Harry Potter glasses. So I feel like it was really worth the $65 personally. I don't think I would do it again next year just because I want to try something else but if that sounds fun to you I would highly recommend that from Essentially Zen. Another event that I highly recommend that is free is the Wand Chooses the Wizard ceremony from Blair Maid. We did this last year and I knew we had to do it again this year. It is just so much fun, but I will say it is very popular. And so if this is something you're interested in, you probably need to be in line no less than 20 minutes before um, because they just fill up and the space is kind of small so they can only take so many people at a time. So this little ceremony is very similar to like the Ollivander's wand shop experience at Universal Studios. They have transformed the back room of their shop into like a wand shop and they have the wand maker who comes down and she chooses one child from the audience to try out a number of different wands. Now both years they have had really cool special effects and they have been different which i really appreciated that they've just kept mixing it up so last year when the child was trying the wands they made like a lightning storm they made some suitcases on a shelf pop open 
this year. They did like a sprinkle on the crowd. They made some brooms move and then they had some lanterns that lit up. So it was fun to see the little special effects. Obviously that is an awesome experience for one child every single hour as well. And then of course, after that, I love going through Blair Maid Shop. They have the cutest merchandise. Uh, I believe most of it is handmade and they really lean into this event with just all sorts of beautiful like Harry Potter themed signs and like paintings, little bookshelf plaques, handmade wands, candles, like the works. So I love going through there. That is one of the top shops that I would say you just can't miss while you're there. And again, that is free to do that experience so definitely make sure you carve out time for that another free experience that i really enjoyed this year was their beware of low flying owl show i think they had this last year but it was rained out so we didn't get to go and i was so bummed because i absolutely love owls and so this was such a fun presentation with a couple workers who um, have like these rescued owls. They're all there because of some sort of injury where they couldn't return to the wild, like a missing eye or something like that. And so they had four different kinds of owls, a barn owl, a barn owl, a great horned owl, and a little tiny screech owl. And they were so cute. They walked us through like how each of the owls are different, how they hunt, things that are like a threat to their survival rate. Like it was very educational, but also entertaining. And then before and after they had um, owls out with them and you could take pictures. So before the show, I got to meet Ify, the barn owl. And then after the show, I got to take a picture with Thistle, the screech owl. And this little guy had the angriest expression on his face it was so comical he looked like he absolutely did not want to be there but i think that was just his face we all loved him so much but that was just like a fun extra experience they have a number of other like animal related shows as well like the slither and snake show and i believe there's also another show that's just like general like rescued animal ambassadors that they bring out but i just I really love the Owl Show. Now, this is just a drop in the bucket of all the different things that you can experience here. They had glass blowing demonstrations, or you could sign up for like a blow your own glass globe thing this year. The demonstration was free. They have character parades. They have the Hogwarts train that arrives three times a day and it brings different characters on the train. They have a little adopt a dragon thing and you could take your little dragon and then go to specific locations around town to collect beads. The Reunion Bakery had sorting cruffins. There's a little booth that sells dog sorting house biscuits. There is a show they put on from the perspective of the Hufflepuffs through the seven years at Hogwarts with just the premise that they've been overlooked and this is their story. They have mermaids. Like there's just so much you can do and see here that we still have not seen all of it in the last two years. And part of that is just because there's a lot of different events going on at different times. So you kind of have to prioritize what you want, but that's why we want to go again a third year. Some of the stuff you can kind of experience passively, like while we were waiting for the Blair made wand ceremony, we saw them setting up for wand dueling and doing the Yule Ball lessons. So some stuff you can kind of just observe but there's a lot of stuff that we still want to go and experience and again so much of this is free a couple of the other like paid experiences that really stuck out to me was one where you could make your own spell book or journal and they had like leather stuff where you could work with and put in the pages that looked really cool um there was like a bath bomb making class an herbal tea um class as well and so there are just so many 
fun experiences that these local shop owners put together. And it seemed like there were some extra ones this year as well. So I'm really interested to see what they have next year. Something that I do want to point out is that if you want to do any paid experiences, you will need to sign up for those prior to the day of because they all just really sell out quickly. They will have the full schedule and available experiences on their website and Facebook page um, probably about a week to two weeks before. They're really good about getting that out in advance. So it would be good to kind of plan your day around those experiences. Also, consumable or limited quantity items, you really want to try and hit those at the beginning of the day. One of our friends was trying to do the little adopt a dragon and apparently they sold out in the first three hours just because everyone wanted them. We were going to try to get some lavender lemonade and lavender ice cream. Booth completely sold out. They're shut down. We weren't able to try that. We wanted to do the sorting cruffins. Sold out. Like, you just really need to prioritize anything you want to buy early in the day because you just never know when that last one's going to go and you're not going to be able to get it. And the last thing I would say is just make sure you set aside some time to go through all the different shops. A lot of the shops bring in special merchandise or do really cute like window front displays for the event. So you never know what you're going to find. I do believe Blair Maid is the one that goes like the most all out. But like the local coffee shops will have special drink menus. There are a couple different places that sell butter beer. Uh, the Baja Bean and the Green Room, they are very different butter beers. I will say that. I got the Baja Bean one this year in a little color changing cup. And then my friends went to the Green Room and they got like a much thicker um, type of butter beer and it had a little more um, like carbonated kick to it. So you may want to try those different things. And also a lot of these storefronts will have special little booths right outside their store. So they'll have little experiences going on or maybe extra themed merchandise so you don't have to go in the store but a lot of them just have all these really cute boutique style items so it's just super fun to go in there even if it's sunny outside we did more shopping last year because it was rainy but i think both years i really enjoyed going through all those different shops they're just so cute all right that is all for my queen city mischief and magic festival review for 2024 i hope you enjoyed this and that it answered a lot of the questions you might have had about this festival in general and that it inspired you to go next year Again, we already have plans to go at the end of next September. I am so excited. I just know it's going to be awesome, rain or shine. And so if you love this series, this is just something that needs to be on your bucket list. If you do have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop those below. I'd love to hear from you and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you would like to read more about either this year's festival or the 2023 festival, I do have full written blog posts about both of those on my website at kaufmanwriting.com on the Carried Away Travels blog. Thank you once again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, save, and share it before you go and subscribe to Carried Away Travels for more videos from me in the future. Thank you so much for being here and happy travels.